fifth Christmas wish. I'm just kidding. I'm going to stop. <clears throat> we can edit that little intro out there. All right, we're in, the, we're, we're in Luke 15, and we are studying the prodigal son, but we're not. We're studying the father. Isn't that great? We're actually studying the father, and a lot of people miss that in the story. We don't want to study the prodigal. We already got that down. You know, we're all, you know, we're all tend toward uh, being off or not seeing or being out of whack with the father and that sort of thing. And so we want to study the father, but, in the, but there is a process that the scriptures do take us through. <clears throat> um, and so my original sentence was, the father has a particular view of his son that he wants formed in us. And again, two things. He wants this view formed in us, and the result of that is we seek him to have Christ in that view formed in us. One's, one's a view, and the other one's Christ himself, according to that father, the Father's view. <clears throat> and, um, and, I mean, if we'd be honest with ourselves, um, nobody knows that view, not perfectly. That's, that's, that's God himself. That's the Father's view. Nobody knows that perfectly. <clears throat> but, but if this story is any inclination, we are blessed more and more as we come into that view. And you see that. I mean, even before he came into the view, he's getting kissed and getting, you know, all of that is being imparted. Whether the son is yet receiving it yet. Because remember right off, you know, he's still going, I'm not worthy. And he's going, you know, come on. Just be with me. You know, if you'll just be with me and in my view, then we'll be fine. But as long as you're sticking with your view, you're messing up the thing, you know? And our view is <clears throat> either we're doing good and give me, the, give me the portion, give me my portion. And, you know, and there's a lot of churches that talk about that. You know, Lord, give me my portion Da, 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 and they don't know they sound just like the prodigal. You know, the, the, the priests, the ones who were set aside to always give God the lamb, their portion was the lamb. <laughs> and that was okay with them. But try putting that on another tribe. It don't work. It don't work never will work because they don't have that heart and that heart i mean you, all you got to do is go back and search out the tribe of levi and you'll see what i'm talking about there was an original heart that moved them at a time that no other tribe moved and god says you're going to be my priest because you have my my desires and my view you know in the forefront okay so <clears throat> um talking about that view being formed in us. So I put down growing into the father's view of his son in you. All right. So growing into the father's view of his son in you cannot happen in a class or church service. Now, let me clarify. <clears throat> That's true. It can, you, you can't. The seeds of it, how shall they hear without, you know, without a preacher, how with someone preach? So, so the seeds of it can be imparted, can be, you know, heard, and they can fall into good ground in your heart. That can happen. But, you know, one plants, one waters, but only God can give the increase. Okay. Well, here's the good news. If we go by this story here, God wants to give the increase. It is his greatest desire to give the increase. He's waiting on oneness. We're, we're the ones dragging our feet. He's, he's waiting for us to just come on in, just, you know, come in with gangbusters, you know. Come boldly to the throne of grace. And we go, I will. I'm, no, you know, I'm, I'm saved, doggone it. And, 
You know, and it has nothing to do with I'm saved, doggone it. It has everything to do with his heart wants oneness. <laughs> you know, because later on we'll feel condemned and then we're, we're the prodigal all over. Well, I'm coming in boldly to get my portion. Now I'm going to the Father, I'm not worthy. Up and down, up and down, like Texas weather. And um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> so the, so the, the, to, to grasp the Father's heart, to then embrace it, um, becomes an eye-opening thing like it did for this in the story here. It, you begin to see evidences of, of it. He treats you different, treats you differently. <clears throat> so... Um, when we were sharing last time, we talked about two sons. We talked about the fact that they're both saved. They're both in the family. They're born again. That makes them part of the family. Uh, and there is an assurance that should come with that. You know, we don't need to be getting saved every week. You know, <laughs> Jesus died once. You know, we don't need to. Never mind. I'm <laughs> I just looked over and saw Mike Wallace. I went, forget it. <clears throat> if he ain't got it by now, don't even say it. <laughs> Inside joke, you know, sorry. Um, <laughs> but here's, this is probably just a statement from me. <clears throat> so you ask the Lord if there's anything to this. But I think that the father experienced uh, um, disappointments over his son's for the lack of his son. Over the prodigal son and the elder son, for the lack of the son, Jesus being their government, Jesus being their life, Jesus being, you know. <clears throat> okay, so, so um, if that's true, and again, you weigh that before the Lord, if that's true, then when the son said, give to me the portion that belongs to me, that had to be a real disappointment because that's just the opposite of the lamb. That's just the opposite of his son. But he, you know, as Mallory was sharing in, in advance of this, um, <clears throat> he divided unto him not his goods but his living. You know, it's always a giving of himself. You know, there's always a, a selfless giving. Why, in the face of one who's going, give me, I want, I want to be this, and I've got aspirations and desires, and I want to see them fulfilled. And he's going, like, so I guess you're not, you're not going to get those with me then, huh? I mean, you must, you must believe that, or you're, because you're heading out of oneness. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then it comes to the elder son, and he also hears about the, the, the oneness feast going on, and he doesn't go in. He asks one of the servants what's going on, and he tells him, and, and he won't go in, and the father has to come out to him. And the father had to be incredibly disappointed Okay, so here's, so let's divide this out. <clears throat> the father can be disappointed with the prodigal son because his spirit wasn't Christ and he wanted, you know, he, he wanted, he had things in his vision that he wanted to reach and be. The elder son didn't have that spirit either and uh, he felt rejected and da 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 when the father says, I've always, everything belongs to you. What is the deal? But in truth, <clears throat> I don't think he was disappointed with them first and foremost. I don't think it's a condemnation thing. I think he's disappointed that he's not getting his son because he wants his son more than he wants them to be right. 
And if it's about being right, that would have been a legal viewpoint, a religious legal. Your, you know, younger son, your spirit is not right. And what you're going to trying to do is da, 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 and all this kind of stuff. Elder son, you need to get over this. It's not about you, da, 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 da. But that, that's not a religious, this is not a religious deal. God's not trying to convince us of a religion. He just loves his son. And he loves us enough to put him in us. And we need to love him back. Remember, that's what we talked about when we talked about loving him back, spending more time loving him back instead of having to always have someone say, well, he loves you. So, you know, sit in your, you know, self-pity, in your little pity party and um, be content to know that he still loves you. No, get the heck up and go to him and f and. Let him, see, it's not even come to the son. It's not attain. The prodigal never attained to the son. He didn't get it. He didn't go after it. He wasn't looking for it. <laughs> Is that crazy? It's, but he wasn't. He didn't. We go, but, you know, so we're the elders saying, well, I've been seeking and searching and doing everything right, and I pray, and I go, oh, Lord, reveal your son and all this stuff. But, you know, what do we got going behind that? But when there's a heart, when there's a heart, when there's a, there's a heart, and the Father, only the Father can detect the timing of God, the, the time of life. The time of life. Some of y'all remember my sharings recently in Ireland. And that was a good sharing. Praise God. I, and I'm not commenting on me. I'm commenting on, I, you know, it's like when you're feeding someone, uh, Faf there in Ireland, she said the first time, one of the first trips we went, she said, I see bread, loaves of bread coming out of your mouth and you're feeding everybody. And, and I thought, you know, if you only knew that I'm getting to eat of that bread too when it's coming out of me, it's a privilege and a blessing. It's nothing, it's not I, it's not me. It has nothing to do with me, you know. And, and it's not really about me saying it's not about me and trying to be small. It's just Jesus is so great that to mention smallness is stupid. I mean, isn't that right? I mean, he, isn't he that big? And for me to say, well, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm nothing. I'm just small, and you know, y'all should be, y'all should be proud that I'm lowly. And you know, we're going, you know, self pity or self righteousness. It's all self, you know. Self, you know, the the trying to be humble when it's not the lamb doesn't count. Kind of like that prayer meeting we had on Bala for my. <laughs> we're, we're having a good time tonight, aren't we? <laughs> I know. I know. What a, we've had some good times. And the Lord's been with us. I just, I just, did you get your Christmas card tonight? Yeah, it's going to say basically this. We've been. We've been together for a lot of years from the inception of New Creation Fellowship, and uh, we've we've messed up. I have too, Mike. We both have. We've messed up. We've done it enough, but we still love Jesus. We're still together, and that that means a lot. I mean, to the Father. So, anyway, <clears throat> sorry for the the interjection there. <clears throat> All right, so. Um, Well, let's look at verse uh, 14. We'll read 14 on down a little bit. And when he had spent all, there arose, well, let's see, uh, for country. Yeah, 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the, that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the field, his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. All right, so 
When you are out of oneness, you're outside of it. It's like people look at you, not in oneness, but how you are on your own. You know, they see you in you instead of in him. <clears throat> and that's what happened to the prodigal. They're not seeing they're not seeing the, or smelling the fragrance of Christ or seeing the life of Christ. They're seeing someone who's separate from him no matter what he does. And um, separation makes you look for resources that cannot help. When you are outside of oneness, you start looking for, because you've got to have some resources. There's got to be something. There's got to be help. And you start looking for answers that can never help. And this is a perfect picture of the prodigal in the scripture we just read. He's just going, okay. I, he went so far as to join himself to a pig farmer. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with the pig farmers. It's just the pigs. They weren't supposed to. They were, un, they were unclean animals. <laughs> Don't. Last thing I need is the pig farmers joining with the great chorus against me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but then he said, <clears throat> you know, um, verse 17, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? All right, so he's, um, he's seeing that without oneness, without union, that um, those resources can never be the answer, no matter how, you know, they seem like you didn't have anything and nobody gave to you and somebody gives you a job as a, you know, and... You know, it all seems so good. <clears throat> so I wrote down, union brings stuff in the Father's house that can help, that's not available out there. So he sees that, and he goes, what am I doing? You know, I'm out here outside of oneness, and, you know, when, when I had oneness, there was, you know what I mean, when I'm living in that and I'm walking in that, there's a freedom, there's a, there's a joy, there's a, um, a life. Um, there's um, living bread. And when you're outside of that oneness and you're just on in your territory as you, you're just, just in the pig pen. You're just in the pig pen. So, um, since I'm getting the thing here. So then, let me read verse 17 again. <clears throat> and when he came to himself, when he came to himself, he said, what am I doing? Oneness is where it's at. Is that, look at it and tell me if I'm lying. Is that not what he's saying? I need to get my eyes off of me, and I need to come back to oneness. I need to come back to, because in oneness is resources that make a difference, that help, that that." You know, bread to eat, it, it, it invigorates me. It makes me alive again. <clears throat> so, um, I wrote, being with the Father is better than being on my own, trying to figure it all out. <laughs> right? Being in oneness with him. And when I'm saying being in oneness, I'm talking about to acknowledge that we are... We are not our own. We are of him. We are out from him. That who Christ is in the Father's eyes is who lives in me or certainly is placed in me. And <clears throat> you don't have to live up to the standard of Christ. Christ lives in you. You don't have to live up to some standard. Christ does the living. But it can't, he can't do that outside of oneness. So you have to start acknowledging the one. 
And you have to stop allowing the, the thoughts and the condemnations and the fears and the, um, and the doubts and the, all the things, you know, well, you know, I mean, you could sit there right now and say, well, I don't, I don't really even understand what you're saying. Who cares? Just, just pray. Just right now when we're talking, remember what we talked about last class? You know, when it comes up, pray. Just say it under your breath. Just say, Father, I don't have a clue about this. Um, and maybe it might even be Father, but I do have a sense that this might be it. Yeah, this might be what you really want from us, which isn't demanding a lot. Just get up and come back to one. <laughs> but but you have to get you have to you have to seek that. And when I say seek that, I don't mean seek it religiously. I mean seek it by saying, you know, I recognize that when I'm seeing you and I'm not seeing myself, that something is better than it is with Hogpen Randy. Hogpen Randy. Don't want him anymore. I want Jesus. I, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Father. That's who, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be identified. Before, I wanted my stuff so everybody would go, oh, look, he's got resources. They came from the Father. They came from God. And yeah, and soon as they become yours, they disappear. But once they're his, they're living. They're living. And they will continue to be living. You know, the living word, the, 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 the living God. I don't want to serve a, a believing God. Meaning, meaning a God you just believe in. I want to serve the living God, and I want to serve by being the vessel that he can live in. So, you know, like in my case, I just quit, I, I just quit trying to do it. You know, I just go, well, he's my life. He'll do it. And guess what? He does. He really does, you know. And nobody has to tell you that God still loves you. <laughs> because you're in a love relationship of oneness. It's just, it's beautiful. It really is. So let's just close now and we'll just have a, a little prayer. And, um, you know, if y'all want, we'll just continue on this line. Not, not now, but um, maybe for the next Thursdays that we're together. I don't know if we'll be meeting next Thursday or not. But, you know, because I think that the Spirit is, you know, drawing he's kind of going come on come on little ones <laughs> come on in all right let's pray <clears throat> father we don't know anything we don't have anything we don't have it figured out uh, it's sad that we've thought that we did at times but thank you for sort of letting us go out on our own standing on our own understanding trusting in our own relationship with you that is not based on the one of oneness and feeling empty, dull, separated, lifeless. Thank you that you want to change that. that that's something you want to change and for the better and for our, so that it can answer the things of our heart that we've just we just feel like we'll never reach and yet they're already in us by Christ and you just want to open our eyes to it so we just end by saying we love you and we're going to get up if nothing else by saying I'm sick of this hog pen I want you and we're going to trust the rest of the journey into your hands. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you guys.